Yoshihiro Togashi is a genius. I know that saying that is like saying water is wet, but sometimes you need to sit back and acknowledge greatness. And so I'll say it again, Yoshihiro Togashi is a genius. The famous manga writer responsible for Yu Yu Hakusho and a series near and dear to my heart, Hunter Hunter, is quite an interesting guy. A lot is made of some of Togashi's interests, his love for video games like Dragon Quest, his messy basement, his passion for board games and bowling, and the fact that he's married to the creator of Sailor Moon. However, I think that one facet of Togashi is overlooked, his deep knowledge of religious lore. Hunter x Hunter is a series that, while inspired in part by Jojo's Bizarre Adventure and certain video games, is a largely original work. At the same time, however, I'm certain that Togashi took inspiration from religions around the world when crafting this story. Hunter x Hunter is absolutely dense and riddled with religious themes and symbolism from many cultures around the world, but this is an aspect of the show that seems to be missed by many. Here, I'm going to talk about one of the most underappreciated aspects of Hunter x Hunter, its basis in religion. This video will have an emphasis on religion-centric symbology, themes, and visual cues that are present throughout both the anime and the manga. Togashi does his utmost to litter the entirety of Hunter x Hunter with little bits of cultural and religious symbolism, both visual and narrative. Here, I'm going to do my best to reveal the vast majority of religious references, so strap in. Let's start off simple. There are several characters throughout Hunter x Hunter, such as Netero, Meruem, and Franklin, who have drooping, elongated earlobes. This is likely a direct reference to Buddhism, as Buddha statues and art portray Buddha as having similarly drooping earlobes. Whilst he was writing the Chimera Ant Arc, Togashi also added a not-so-subtle reference to religion on the cover of Volume 28. Not much to add here. The Zodiac Hunters of the Election Arc are one of the more blatant references to religion in the series. They are likely a literal homage to the zodiac signs based in astrology. One of the members, Sayu, contains a specific symbol on his shoulders consisting of a crescent moon and a five-edged star. This is a common Muslim symbol, commonly used on country flags of Muslim countries, and represents both the five pillars of Islam and the concept of striving towards a bright future. Krolo as a character is a walking advertisement for both religious and anti-religious ideas, with foundations in Christianity. Not only does he have a cross tattooed on his forehead, but on the back of his jacket is the St. Peter's cross, a symbol for religion. St. Peter was to be crucified, but did not consider himself worthy to die in the same way as Christ. So, he was crucified on an upside-down cross instead. There is a misconceived notion that the St. Peter's Cross represents anti-Christianity, but quite the opposite is true. On the other hand, Krollo's last name, Lucifer, is a nod to Lucifer, who, by Christian teachings, was an angel who was cast down by God and subsequently became Satan or the Devil. Staying on the subject of Krollo and the Phantom Troop, there is a parallel to Christianity that the Band of Thieves represents that was by no means an accident. The Phantom Troop is a band of 13, essentially containing one leader and 12 apostles. In the story of Jesus, he trusted 12 men to be his closest of allies, his own 12 apostles. The similarities don't stop there, however. In the story of Jesus, he is betrayed and sold out by one of his apostles, Judas. This is basically a direct parallel to how Hisoka functions as a member of the troop. I'm not sure how you can call what Hisoka has done in the past, and is currently doing in the manga, anything but a betrayal to both Krolo and the troop. Though ironically, Krolo mentions the story of Judas during the series specifically, and says that he does not view Judas as a traitor. Additionally, there is the fact that the troop hails from Meteor City, a city for the orphaned and the abandoned, of which the city motto is, We reject no one, so take nothing from us which has quite a religious connotation to it. During the York New Arc, we see Illumi on his cell phone. Here we can see that his cell phone has the Star of David on it. 
This shield is a prominent symbol commonly associated with Judaism. Now that we've covered some of the literal symbols from the series, let's take a look at some of the more abstract symbolism with roots in religion and culture. The theme of sacrifice is a constant throughout the series, seen through many characters. This sacrifice in the show is synonymous with ideas based in religions such as Christianity, Judaism, Hinduism, and Buddhism. Now this is quite a general comparison, I'll admit, and many other series focus on the theme of sacrifice. However, the characters of Netero, Pakunoda, and Neferpito in particular have character arcs that strongly parallel the idea of religious martyrism. Netero's stunning sacrifice to protect humanity, Pakunoda's sacrifice to provide her true members with the truth, plus the sacrificial nature of Pito's final moments and the way she protected her king, all bring the nature of sacrifice to an almost sacred level in Hunter x Hunter. I won't talk too much about him, as I am planning a full character analysis video, but Meruem's character arc is full of religious parallels. His birth and the circumstances behind it, his destiny to become the perfect king of the world, the savior, if you will, his eventual enlightenment and realization that not all power is physical, and his realization that what really matters in life is love. I mean, the parallels are so numerous that I don't even know where I would start. The character of Netero is strongly based in Buddhist ideas. His early life was essentially a display of ascetism, which is essentially severe self-discipline. His journey in Hermitage led him with constant prayer to his ultimate Nen power, called the 100-type Guanyin Bodhisattva, which in itself is based in religion both visually and conceptually. A Bodhisattva is defined as a person who is able to reach Nirvana, but delays doing so out of compassion in order to save suffering beings, which can be applied to Netero's story, and is an idea deeply rooted in Mahayana Buddhism. One of the more overlooked characters in Hunter x Hunter, Ikalgo, actually has a strong basis in religious morals as well. Ikalgo's strong reluctance to harm anyone throughout his mission during the castle storming, despite his task's difficulty, was a display of non-violence. Non-violence is the personal practice of being harmless to others under every condition. It comes from the belief that hurting people, animals, or the environment is unnecessary to achieve an outcome, and refers to a general philosophy of restraining from violence due to moral, religious, or spiritual principles. Thanks, Wikipedia. This idea of non-violence is rooted in religions and cultures all over the world, though perhaps most popularly in Hinduism, primarily through the teachings of Mahatma Gandhi. There is a more subtle narrative tool in both Nov and Welfin's character arcs that can be considered very religious. Both of these men are permanently changed after they're struck to their core with the sheer terror and awe of a being truly superior and more powerful than them. It can be strongly argued that Welfin and Nov, through Merum's power and Poof's aura respectively, were struck here by the fear of God, or at least a strong parallel. The meaning of the fear of the Lord has been debated, but most agree that it's the idea of living in awe, respect, or submission to a being more powerful than oneself. Submission is the key word here. After being struck by terror, both Nov and Welfin submit and admit defeat. Pretty strong parallels here. Human life is too long to devote to reproduction, yet too short to devote to learning in the helix of time. Perhaps that is why humans succumb to desire and seek release. Despite that fact, life is complete with the sun, the land, and poetry. Diego's last words in the series are poetic and inspiring in nature, and display a worldview based in true enlightenment, both a deeply religious theme and one rooted in the philosophy of radical enlightenment which advocates freedom of expression, individual liberty, and peace of mind. Many times throughout the series, animals are shown to be drawn to truly great hunters such as Netero, Kite, Knuckle, Jing, and Squala. Several Eastern schools of thought such as Hinduism contain religious figures such as Vishnu or Shiva that had an affinity with animals as well. Nen itself has bases in religion as well. This power system is very dynamic, but it ultimately revolves around auras. 
Though they are not mentioned in the Bible and thus are rejected by Christianity, auras themselves find bases in schools of religious and philosophical thought, primarily Eastern religions and more specialized schools of thought such as modern spiritualism. Jing's journey through Hunter x Hunter draws so many parallels with Buddhism that I have trouble believing that there was any other inspiration for Togashi when writing his character. Jing basically takes a leaf out of almost every Pokemon protagonist's dad ever and decides to leave Gong. He leaves him with family to go and pursue adventure through being a hunter. A situation like this would likely be frowned upon by Western audiences, but Togashi had more Eastern ideas in mind when writing Jing. We see this through the attitude of Gong, who doesn't hate or resent his father for leaving him, but strives to understand him and follow in his footsteps. Jing's story is the template of the Buddha. He disregards familiar responsibility, which is part of Buddhist traditions. The Buddha left both his wife and son to seek enlightenment. Eventually, he achieved this and found nirvana, complete liberation. However, in order to do this, one must minimize and sever any external attachments and distractions, which includes familial attachments. In Hunter x Hunter, Jing is on his quest to find Nirvana. It is essential to see Jing through an Eastern mindset in order to understand his quest, his philosophy, and Gon's positive admiration for his father. The religious symbols used throughout the story of Hunter x Hunter are plentiful, and many are not without their purpose. While some symbols, such as Illumi's Star of David, are likely throwaway references, some other ideas tell the audience plenty about the characters if they understand the meaning behind the symbolism. For example, the amount of Buddhist ideas associated with Netero tell the audience plenty about his characterization and integrate with themes prominent in the Chimera Ant arc flawlessly. Certain symbols may just be there for fun and others can shed some light on some of the deeper aspects of the series. I've definitely missed some symbolism here, so you'll have to forgive me. But the sheer amount of religious references in Hunter x Hunter is absolutely staggering. So here I'll end my examination of the more simple religious references in the series and get into some more prominent overarching thematic ideas. The idea of spiritual awakening or rebirth is a theme that is common in many religions throughout the world, and Togashi put a huge emphasis on this theme in Hunter x Hunter, particularly in the Chimera Ant arc. The whole essence of humans being reborn into Chimera Ants literally revolves around the entire idea of rebirth. In the series, we have prominent characters that we have gotten to know and understand reborn into Chimera Ants, adding some emotional impact to their stories. Characters like Kite, Palm, and Colt are all great examples of this. Meruem has a rebirth after the miniature Rose incident and undergoes a literal Holy Communion to aid in his rebirth, eating and drinking with the body and blood of his royal guards to begin anew. Gon also experiences a kind of dark rebirth, or an anti-rebirth, as he recklessly channels all of his rage and lust for revenge to fight with Pito. Rebirth is a big part of the Chimera Antarch and Hunter x Hunter, and if we expand upon this idea a bit further, we can find even more parallels between this series and religious ideas. This idea of clean slates in Hunter x Hunter expands a bit from instances of rebirth in the series. The idea I'm getting at here is a specific type of rebirth. Let me explain. This idea of clean slates is similar to themes of rebirth and follows under the umbrella of rebirth, but it's more specific in its thematic meaning and its consequence. In instances throughout the series, Togashi has many characters who decide, for one reason or another, that they want to change or reset their lives or situations. Maybe they want to alter their path, maybe they want to right their wrongs, but for one reason or another, many characters seek a chance to change, to start fresh and begin anew, to right their wrongs, to change their lives, to atone. This is nearly identical to Catholic traditions of reconciliation and confession, in which a person confesses their sins and is cleansed of them, allowing for, you guessed it, a metaphorical clean slate in their life to start from. This series is full of instances of characters trying to start fresh as such, so I'll provide some examples.
In the election arc, through Alaka's power, Kilua is able to give Gon a clean slate. At his climax in the Chimera Ant arc, Gon had gone so far off the deep end that it seemed there was no way back and that he would be permanently changed. However, here Alaka is able to save Gon and as far as we can tell at this point in the manga, spare him from any consequences that his fight with Pito may have caused. He is given a new chance to start fresh, meet Jing, and go to Whale Island to learn Nen from a different perspective, having learned from his past mistakes. Now whether or not Alaka's power is overpowered, and a bit of sloppy writing from Togashi is up for debate, but here Gon is undoubtedly given a clean slate, essentially cleansed of any consequence from his dark anti-rebirth. The Koala Man from the Chimera Ant arc is a bit of an enigma. He's definitely one of the more distinct characters through his design and metaphysical debates, though he has little impact on the overall plot. He may seem like a throwaway character, but at the heart of this character is a sad tale about regret, remorse, and redemption. His arc contains plenty of parallels with Catholic reconciliation, and we learn this in his scene with the reborn kite. Before the Koala's death, he was an assassin, with a complete disregard for human life. He retained his memories as a chimera ant and became fascinated with the idea of reincarnation, a concept rooted in Buddhism, Sikhism, and Hinduism. He now believes in the eternal, ever-living soul, an idea that is strongly supported by Abrahamic religions. Eventually, he came to the conclusion that all life is precious. He then started to strongly regret his actions as a cold killer, he remained a killer as a chimera ant, efficiently killing any human that crossed his path. However, he did not do this because he wanted to. He did this to spare the humans of any torture that they would otherwise receive at the hands of the other chimera ants. Koala had killed the girl whose body Kite had been born into in order to spare her pain, but he laments at this fact, saying that he should have killed his fellow chimera ants who were trying to hurt the girl. He wanted to stop this cycle of bloodshed, but it had become a part of him and his efforts were in vain. He had come to Kite to express this regret and see if the same girl had been reborn again. Eventually, he decides that he wants to kill himself to end this cycle of suffering. However, Kite stops Koala and forbids him to do so. Kite then tells him to begin serving her, or him, I don't know. The point is, for the Koala Man to truly repent for his wrongdoings, he must serve Kite and apologize every day to cleanse his soul. Here, Koala is given a fresh start. His sins aren't erased, but he is given the chance to begin anew and start his journey towards redemption. Taking the Koala Man's sorrow, remorse, and yearning to change into account, this is the cleanest of clean slates that he could have asked for. Not only are the religious parallels clear in terms of the nature of the soul, about confession and atonement, but this is a sentimental tale about redemption. After his adventures with Gon, in which he experienced joy, sorrow, pain, and friendship, Kilua has developed a lot. Kilua added an element of nihilism and existentialism to Hunter x Hunter in the beginning. Throughout the series, he has never really known his purpose in life, and often pondered that he never knew what he wanted to do. All he knows about himself is that he does not want to stay with his family and become an assassin, and that he wants to be a friend to Gon. However, at the end of the election arc, Kilua has undoubtedly changed. He now has a purpose, caring for Alaka and Nanika. He finds joy in this purpose. He's ready to leave all of his pains and past sins behind and is eager to get started in this new journey with his beloved sibling. This development may not be a reset or a clean slate in the strictest sense of the word, but Kilua is undoubtedly turning over a new leaf and beginning a new year, leaving his dark past behind him. Colt is a very interesting guy, and essentially, some of Togashi's messages about humanity and the soul are displayed in him in character form. Colt has an extremely strong sense of loyalty and duty, inherited from his past life as a child named Kurt. 
He follows the Queen's orders and commits some pretty evil acts in the beginning of this arc. However, after, he starts to become more complex and begins subconsciously displaying signs from his previous life. He faces moral dilemmas when he senses that the Chimera Ants are beginning to plot for themselves. But Colt truly develops when he realizes that his Queen is in danger. Here his sense of loyalty and his duty as a Chimera Ant are in conflict. Colt is an ant. Ingrained in him is an ant's honor, a sense of belonging to the colony. It is here where Colt turns his life around. He goes to the Hunters for help to save his queen. I can't overstate how big of a deal this is. Colt has stressed throughout his arc that the colony goes first, but here he turns against his brethren. After his queen dies, he vows to completely side with the humans and hunters, and dedicate his life to raising, loving, and protecting the newly born kite. Here he is turning over a new leaf and changing his ways, vowing to live a life of virtue from this point on, consistent with the ideas of reconciliation. These instances of rebirth and clean slates do have plenty of individual differences between them, but at their core they all involve a change in some of the characters' lives, leading to a fresh start. Confession and reconciliation are one of the seven sacred sacraments in Catholic worship. Although not all of these Hunter Hunter characters are completely cleansed before being given a clean slate, the theme of being given a chance to atone for past sins and begin anew is a constant here. When you really stop to think about it, the amount of real world religion that is displayed in Hunter Hunter is astonishing. What's even more astonishing is how underplayed this aspect of the series is. I'm sure that tons of watchers have seen the show and read the manga without realizing how much of Hunter Hunter is rooted firmly in religious ideas and themes. I know for a fact that most of it went over my head during my first watch. I mean, I suppose there is a chance that all of this could be a wild coincidence, but I somehow doubt it. The sheer amount of depth this series has is truly spectacular and never fails to impress me. What do all of these religious symbols and themes mean? It's hard to say. The themes of rebirth and sacrifice are deeply emotional and personal and can contribute to basically any story if integrated well, along with being ideas that the audience can truly relate to. The purpose of the symbolism in the show itself is, like I said, a way of adding depth and more gravitas to certain characters and arcs. However, is there more to this symbolism? Perhaps Togashi was trying to communicate a message of harmony or acceptance of all cultures and beliefs through Hunter x Hunter. Perhaps it's just some extra world building. Perhaps he adds it all just for fun. Either way, it's all very interesting. I'm sure that I haven't covered all of the religious references and themes that are in Hunter x Hunter, and if you note any that I've missed, feel free to leave a comment. As always, let me know if you have any topics in anime or video games that you think would make for a decent video. As ever, thank you for watching.